Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Sanchowskis. Today is the 7th of May 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's morning uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, uh, before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning um, of our JVD YouTube channel, which will, by the way, wait, let me switch on quickly. There we go. Uh, our YouTube channel, which, which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JVD Bank website, and specifically our JVD Research page, which you can find here on the top when you, uh, when you go to jvdbank.com. And click on it, and yep, it'll take you to the to this page, which um, uh, which we also update on a daily basis. So I believe you can find something useful here. Uh, now then, let's quickly have an update here. What's happening globally? So this is the figure from yesterday's uh, traders tea time. So <clears throat> let's see by how much has has the figure grown. Um, so most likely we have surpassed the uh, three million seven hundred thousand uh, mark. And uh, yep, so it has grown by quite a bit, so I'd say. And uh, yes, uh, the, the total amount of deaths also continue to rise. Um, so um, let me just quickly wait until uh, this uh, gets updated. Uh, so as you can see, the, it continues to rise, but this is what I wanted to have a look at. So the daily cases have increased uh, by 92,000. So uh, comparing to the yesterday's uh, 79,000. So, um, okay, so this is of course is not looking good. Um, so how, however, we'll continue monitoring the situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, for now, uh, US is leading the way in terms of uh, infections and deaths um, but as I've mentioned yesterday uh, UK which is below Spain and Italy in terms of uh, infections but it ha is taking second place in terms of deaths so not a very good situation here in UK um, so now then let's have it let's jump into the markets now uh, the in the first index I wanted to touch on of course is the FTSE 100 now <clears throat> here to be honest I'm not going to spend too much time on the FTSE and, and DAX today because uh, it's still the same ideas that kind of apply. Uh, we still need to see that good uh, break above the 5,895 zone. Uh, currently, the price is balancing below this, uh, so it's somewhere around here. So we have, we'll continue monitoring this, but uh, yeah, in order to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push, at least a push above this one, above the 5,895 zone. Uh, of course, don't get me wrong, uh, to get even more comfortable, we would like to see a push above the highest point of April, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll start considering higher levels if we get a push above the 5,895 zone, so keep your eyes on this one. Um, now, DAX, the German DAX here, uh, yesterday it closed slightly in the red um, and drifted lower. However, it still remained above this 21-day EMA on the daily chart that I, that I keep talking about from the, from the beginning of this week because what I was saying that, in a way, if this 21-day uh, EMA continues to provide support as it did here around mid-April, then, well, I mean, this could continue drifting higher. However, to get comfortable with, this, or should I say, to consider as uh, to start considering higher levels again we need to see a push above the 10,820 zone to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see a push above the highest point of april which is around the 11,235 zone so again keep your eyes on these guys uh if this index suddenly drops below the 10,280 zone then yep this is from where we'll start considering uh lower areas 
um, gold. Now, gold here is at a very interesting spot. So basically, it continues to flirt with this territory, the 1680 zone. I keep talking about this one, and basically, uh, the the commodity is just kind of confirming that it is kind of stuck here in this wide range. Um, and uh, for now, we cannot really do anything. Um, previously, I talked about that if we get a push above this barrier here, uh, above the 17. 14, 15 zone, then we could maybe uh, consider a possible move higher towards the upper bound of the range. Um, however, for now it's stuck here uh, and uh, some of you might probably would like to draw a descending triangle here from the short term perspective. So something like this maybe. Uh, so yep, of course these, t according to all the textbook uh, TA rules, uh, TA textbooks, um, these formations tend to break to the downside. However, uh, before we could start considering that, we need that uh, confirmation break here below the 1680 zone. So, and ideally, we would like to see a daily close because we do get some overshoots here, but we don't get a daily close below this area. So, ideally, we would prefer to see a daily close first and then aim for lower levels. Um, in terms of the uh, the upside here, as I said, uh, a push above the high of uh, 4th of May, or in other words, the high of this week, uh, which is around the 17. 14 15 zone roughly around there um then uh yep we could aim for slightly higher levels uh, only up until the upper uh, until the, we hit this upper side of the range uh brent oil so brent oil um is uh, well drifted lower yesterday today this morning it's stuck here it's kind of not doesn't know what it wants to do um for, for now to be honest we will, we will remain careful because on one hand yes it declined yesterday it may continue sliding however from the on the other hand it still has some room here to slide towards the 21 day ema which as you can see previously for example last week it acted as a good area of support um this on Monday, it also acted as a good area of support. So it, we want to see if it actually does the same trick again. And uh, if if it does get a hold up somewhere near the 21-day EMA, then uh, we want to see if it continues to hold. Because uh, if it does, then yep, we could see another push higher. Um, and uh, this push higher could drag the uh, the commodity towards the 36.10 zone somewhere around here. Um, we'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, we're not going to drag too much far to the upside here because let's not forget it overall we're still within a downtrend here below trading below the uh, this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 8th of january so in a way um yep for now we will remain very very careful if the commodity suddenly drops below the 21 day ema and falls below the 27.18 territory here then we could consider a possible move lower however we'll still be very careful and cautious uh, because ideally we would prefer maybe to see a drop below the 23.20 zone here and then aim for lower levels. Uh, Bitcoin. So I talked about this one yesterday and I was <clears throat> talking about this one the on, on the Bitfinex exchange. Um, so uh, this is what I wanted to quickly kind of pick up on again. Um, let me just uh, quickly probably adjust this slightly. So... Um, the lines here that I have drawn, uh, these are um, basically, if they're clearly visible on the monthly chart, I've looked, I've looked at this one yesterday. So this is the situation that we're having here. Um, so basically, the um, the crypto is testing the upper side here of this uh, of of this downside line taken from the highest point of December 2017. Um, so the big question here is can we overcome it because for now you can see that on the daily chart we can see that it's getting a hold up here it's it's struggling to move higher however if we do get a push above this barrier above this 9442 zone which is the high of the highest point of April then yes we will aim for slightly higher levels here at least we will target the highest point of February uh, near the 10491 zone also don't forget that this this is also the highest point the current highest point of uh, 2020 um, now in a way, like I said, if it continues to hold, if this downside line continues to hold and provides resistance, uh, we could see a bit of a correction here. But again, 
don't get me wrong, we are still above this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low the 13th of March. So in a way, um, we could get a hold up somewhere around here as well. So that's why uh, it could be a little bit difficult to evaluate this one if it continues to kind of coil up here uh, in between these two lines. So, um, so in other words, guys, uh, for now, probably all eyes are on this on this downside line, uh, the one taken from the highest point of December 2017 and uh, on this uh, the highest point of April for now, the 9,442 territory. A nice good pop above this could, in a way, uh, open the door towards some higher levels. Now then... Um, Jumping into a few pairs very quickly, so US dollar against the Turkish lira. Now this is unstoppable and look at the rally here that we're having and uh, since the end of February you can see this one that we're kind of uh, exploding here <clears throat> to the upside and the most important is that the pair has now reached the its all-time high near the which was previously reached uh, uh, on in August 2018. So this level here, the seven uh, seven point twenty sixty nine level, so approximately there, it the pair is already kind of overcoming this one, <clears throat> and it already managed to overcome that territory. So the big question here is how far can this continue moving? Because as you can see, as far as data goes here on our on our chart, that is the all-time high. That is the uh, that is the problem here. I would say uh, for the Turkish economy, um, if last time in in August the um, I think I was covering this one in in August 2018 as well that we had this massive rally suddenly so where the Turkish lira devaluated here we have a gradual uh, move higher and uh, well I mean the government probably sh would should intervene uh, well we'll see if they do um, if they manage to increase their interest rates however of course we understand that the uh, the the Turkish government is against that so uh, the Turkish central bank has a bit of a problem uh, with that so yeah uh, we'll see how all this works out but so, yeah that's something that has to be done some measures has have to be taken in Turkey that is for sure uh, so let's see if they do something like that. But again, for now, yes, the pair is uh, confirming a new higher high today. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see how far can this go? Can it reach the um, the the eight mark? Well, we'll see about that. Uh, but for now, probably you should be very careful with uh, with those shorts because uh, right now you can see that yes, it continues to travel higher. Um, so let's see how all this is going to play out. <clears throat> now then, uh, USDJPY, uh, looking at this picture, so yesterday we managed to close below this barrier, the, below this area, the 106.34 uh, level, I talked about this one, and uh, then it made it made its way all the way here towards this 105.94 zone, so uh, almost managed to reach that uh, level, fell shy just a few, from a few points of, of hitting that, um, and now this morning we're seeing a bit of a correction here back up uh, where the uh, where the rate is currently kind of uh, knocking on the door for, uh, on this of this 106.34 zone from underneath. So we'll see if it can continue to hold. This is what I talked about uh, yesterday, basically what I was saying that yes, in a way, even even if we see a drop below the 106.34 zone, still this could reverse and push higher. But as long as it's going to stay below this downside line, uh, we will uh, remain. Uh, we will continue examining uh, the the downside scenario. For now, of course, all eyes are on this 106.34. Let's see if it can provide decent resistance. If it fails, uh, probably the bears should not give up yet because uh, the next kind of option for them to step in could be around the around this downside line taken from the high of the 6th of April. In order to aim for higher levels we'll, we'll wait for a push up of the 107.50 zone and only then aim for the upside. AUD NZD, so um, AUD NZD is pushing higher so you can see that the Australian dollar is slightly on the stronger side um, so um, it, we will we are continuing to observe this one everything is kind of working according to plan for now. Uh, the 
pair kind of uh, reversed uh, from this upside line. I mean, didn't quite reach it, don't get me wrong, but uh, it reversed earlier and uh, started uh, pushing higher. The, the pair found support uh, around this level right here. So the low of the 23rd of April, uh, which is around the 1.0585 uh, zone. So 1.0585 acted as a good area of support from which, as you can see, the pair kind of drifted higher. And it continues to move uh, upwards. Let's see if we can f push further uh, if we can push further north now we do have a bunch of good levels here to keep an eye on so first one that we're looking at is the 1.0708 level which is the low of the uh, 4th of November um, however um, however of course uh, to be honest given that this is a bit of a tentative one because it got kind of violated right now what we're going to mainly focus right now is on this level here the 1.0757 territory which is near the highest point of April and uh, marks the low of the 12th of November of last year so this could be a nice potential uh, target for now for us so let's see how this all this is going to play out but again for now from the very short term perspective yes we will continue aiming higher, um, especially if it can if it balances above this key area of resistance, which previously acted as a good area of support, as you can see back here on the eight, on the eighth of October, and the twenty third of October, or in other words, the lowest point of October, uh, which now is acting as a good area of resistance, uh, which is, and this level is roughly around the one point zero six sixty five territory. So if we say if we see the uh, the rate kind of staying above this territory, then yes, there is a good chance for this one to drift further north. Uh, and also, as long as the pair continues to move above this upside line, yes, we will continue uh, to aim north. In case this decides to break the Mm, the the upside line here now previously I talked about this level here the 1.0532 but to be honest given that it moves further north and further to the right right then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna monitor this level right here the 1.0585 zone and uh, in a way if we get a drop below this territory then yes, we will aim for uh, further declines. We will at least we will target this area here near the 1.0484 zone, which is the low of the uh, 21st of April, which also coincides with the 200 EMA on the daily chart. Um, GBP JPY. Now I'll focus on the. Uh, Bank of England, which is coming out in around 10 minutes, so uh, and its interest rate decision. So previously, uh, the, the well, the rate is currently sitting at uh, the interest rate is sitting at, at, at plus 0.1 percent. So let's see what uh, what what moves will uh, the BOE. Uh, takes so that's why we're not going to do much here and not going to speculate too much here on on the pound We want to see the reaction uh, For now from the technical side of course yesterday. We saw a nice drop here below this territory. So wonderful. So uh, Yep, the bears uh, the bears are quite happy We could see a bit of a correction here to the upside However, if it remains if the rate stays below the hundred and thirty two point forty four territory then well, we could see another round of selling. So basically, in other words, something like this could be possible, uh, where the uh, the the GBP JPY could move higher. But if it fails to move above the 132.44 zone, then yes, another round of selling could be possible. Don't get me wrong; it might the news might drive this pair straight away to the downside. And the next target that we're keeping an eye on is the 129.46. After that, if we do reach this level, we'll take it from there. Uh, GBP USD also quite interesting. So I was looking at this one um, uh, this week and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the short term upside support line taken from the low of the um, uh, just bear with me one moment guys. Um, so I do apologize for that. So yep, uh, we are like I said, I was looking at this um, upside support line um, and what I was saying that in, if, if we get a break below this uh, then yes we, we there is a chance for this one to drift further south however uh, we would prefer to see a drop below this territory here the 1.2247 zone uh, 1.22 
47 50 territory and then we could uh, aim for uh, for lower levels for now we'll, we'll be very careful like I said we want to see the reaction after the BOE um, euro JPY so uh, Euro JPY sold off heavily yesterday, and as you can see, it drifted south here. It uh, not only overcame this barrier, the 115.41 zone, which is the low of the, um, the lowest point of April, but it also overcame this 114.85 territory, which, and let me just go back into history, this is the lowest point of uh, 2017, guys. Um, so, uh, and this was the lowest point of April 2017, and in general, the lowest point of, of 2017. So we managed to drop below this, so all this is not looking good here for uh, for this pair. Uh, the next potential target to consider could be this low of the 10th of November, or in other words, is, the, is it the lowest point? Yes, that's the lowest point of November 2016. So we'll keep a close eye on this one. Uh, that's roughly around the 113.73 zone. Let's see if the pair can drift further south. However, uh, we will, like I said, we'll be very, very careful for now uh, because it's quite, quite tricky. We, on one hand, yes, we are quite overstretched here to the downside. On the other hand, this could continue falling. So uh, first, let's keep an eye on the 114.85 territory right here, which is the lowest point of 2017. If this time it provides, it acts as a good area of resistance, then, well, like I said, it, it we could see another round of selling. And finally, Euro USD here. So we are coming close. Uh, this is what I talked about yesterday, that we're going to remain neutral because we are very close near this 1.07. 77 territory so if we get a drop below this then uh, well deeper extensions to the downside are possible so in other words we need to see a nice good daily close below the 1.0777 and then we could aim for further declines because as you can see we uh, we had over some overshoots previously here but we didn't get a daily close so we need to see that daily close in order to aim for further decline so uh, if this area continues to provide support and we let's say for example we see an overshoot but the daily candle still closes above this uh, above this 1.0777 then well I mean we could see an, a, a rebound here and basically we just confirm this range this wide range where euro usd is currently trading at so but again that's in the scenario if we get a uh, a rebound from this 1.0777 if we do get a, a day we get a daily close then well deeper extensions to the downside could be possible maybe even towards the lowest point of march or the lowest point of this year near the 1.0633 zone so guys i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening um now Keep your eyes, like I said, in a few minutes. Uh, well, you'll see this is recording already. The Bank of England will have its uh, decision made and delivered. So, yep, uh, guys, I hope you stay safe. There still could be a lot, loads of opportunities today. So, uh, and uh, yep, we'll keep an eye on the um, on the BOE inflation report later on. So, something to monitor, and of course the uh, the initial jobless claims and the continuing jobless claims. So. So keep your eyes on those today. The US ones, of course. Um, so yep, keep your eyes on those. Let's see how uh, that economy is performing and uh, could be quite an interesting day. So have a wonderful trading day, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much and bye-bye.